If you have a Duquesne Star Call intercom system and little to no information about it, then this is a video that you must watch. Floyd the YouTuber here, and in today's video we will go over the basics of my Duquesne Star Call intercom system. Now the Star Call intercom systems have their own rack unit enclosure, which can either be a standalone unit like this or one that's built into a wall somewhere, and they both do pretty much the same thing. And these are Duquesne rack units, as you can see here. They're not just any standard rack units. So what I'll do to get started, I'll start at the top of the unit and work my way down. So at the top of the unit, ideally you have your program sources, so like an audio program input. On this unit, there's an audio mixer, which is also made by Duquesne. And this only uh, controls the audio input coming from the inputs on this mixer. So this could control up to six mics. However, this has only got two pots for it. And then there's an auxiliary input, bass and treble controls, and then the master volume. Now this is only a mono mixer, there's nothing stereo in this unit. But you could feed this the left and right channel and it would out only output the one channel that the, uh, that the intercom would use. So working our way down the unit. This is a modular container that contains the brains of the unit. Now in here there's cards which each have different purposes and there's power supplies and uh, a small amplifier module for paging individual rooms and then down below that here are where the program amplifiers would be so <clears throat> these are used for paging or for distributing the audio program and this has only got one amplifier in it and then a blank blank panel now this is a 125 watt amplifier and it can output 8 ohms 25 volt or 75 volts to the speakers. So this part of the rack unit is the real heart of the entire system. In the upper left corner here we have the power supply module which gives power to all the boards here, intercom amplifier modules, and uh, any other program sources or phones that require 24 volts. And uh, This is the intercom amplifier module and you can have up to two of these in this type of unit. And this supports the two-way communication back and forth between rooms. And down here, this is the central processing card, which is in the bay of 14 slots for these these different expansion cards. And now, this is the, I believe, the expanded version of the central processing card. And at the top here, it has a uh, flashing light, and the manual for this calls out the heartbeat of the of the of the intercom. And moving down, there's dip switches to set different parameters. There's in out ports and I believe there's also single pull double throw relays on here that this can control and then there's two RS-232 serial ports for programming and then there's just four wire two four wire serial ports for different applications this could also support a modem and um, this next card here is the audio processing card I believe and uh, has trouble lights up at the top it has a potentiometer for setting the paging tone which does not seem to do anything but that might be set up in the rapid programming software then there's the level control for the microphone input which is right there below and then there's a uh, I believe it's a three decibel boost switch for the two program inputs program one and program two and then there are um, level controls for each of those on each side of them and then there's a level control for the amplifier one out and the amplifier two out and then a level control for that now uh, that uses a special type of connector that goes to the amplifier the program amplifier at the bottom and this is the program input which comes from the audio mixer up at the top these three cards over here are audio switching cards but this one is an ATEL card now this one supports up to four ATEL phones which I'll show later and also how you can control this with the ATEL phones but it has the way that you can tell that this has four blinking lights on it only one of them is blinking because it's only running one phone right now but if it had eight blinking lights it'd be an eight phone card if it had two it would be a two phone card but this has four so it's right in the middle of it and uh, then there is a, uh, I believe it's a 25 pin output from it. And that goes off to a punch block, which I'll show. And uh, 
then it eventually goes through cat5 to the ATEL phone. Now, these are 50 conductor outputs, and the one of them is missing because I'll show that later. And uh, this controls the call switch inputs from the classroom, and it also distributes audio to the classroom. And I'll go up in more detail and take the cards out and show them to you now. So this is the audio switching card, one of three from this unit, and it is revision C. Now, I believe that revision A and B were different because they improved on them, obviously, but this has got 16 relays up here, one for each of the rooms that this card would control, and then it has uh, two relays down here, which I believe control the inputs to these classrooms here, and that's, that's pretty nifty. It looks like there's also expanded versions of this that would have more relays to control more inputs to different rooms but this is what plugs into the back of the unit in the back of that uh, bay of cards there and then up here is the output which goes to the classrooms or whatever type of rooms this is controlling and uh, it also takes the input from the call switch sensors and then there's driver chips for these relays there's uh, that's probably the main, well, this is probably the processor for this card, and then the clock for the processor here with that crystal. That might control the drivers for the relays, and everything is very well laid out on this board here. It's all lined up for each of the rooms. You can, you can see the tracks go up and over and out to this output here. It's a very well-designed printed circuit board, and uh, I believe that's part of the reason why many of these units are still in service, just the the uh, overall design of the boards on them and the quality of the products that Duquesne produced. One quick thing to mention is that the unit that came before the Star Call series was called the MCS 350 or 3500 I don't entirely remember but MCS stands for modular communication system and this is entirely what this is. This is so modular and it's it's very serviceable not necessarily user serviceable but it's it's definitely for sure very modular there's different modules to it and you can change these very easily it's very serviceable these these come out incredibly easily and this is the ATEL card here which ATEL is short for administrative telephone and uh, they're the phones that control the entire system and can page everything now this has these connectors here they plug into the back of the unit it's got that which goes out to control the ATEL phones and there's uh, this puts four wires to each ATEL phone, however there's six wires that go to each phone because of 24 volt power, which comes from that power supply right there. And uh, you can see on this card, there's four transformers, and I'm not entirely sure what they do, but that's for each of the four phones. And there's eight diodes here, so I imagine that two of those are for one phone. Here's the probably the main processor on it here and the oscillator for it. Uh, there might be another processor here because there's another crystal down here over here are the LEDs that blink to show communication with each phone and uh, the way that these go into the unit here they use this and this is a, a screw that goes into the metal on it and that's on a spring and that's very nice it doesn't come out all the way and then this is it's the plastic piece that's on a hinge for popping it out of the unit and there's one of those on each side and that makes these boards so easy to take out and to put back in that we'll look at now as part of is is the central processor card and the audio processor card over there has connections in the back of it it's a standard cat 5 jack and that it's a short cable that runs up to the intercom amplifier module here and i believe it's shielded and i really don't want to mess with taking that card out again because it's kind of a pain to get that specific card in and out but this here is the central processing card and down here there's the four pin serial the two rs232 now the one that's offset is so you could plug in a cable to it and still have the front panel on and then the bottom one there the middle one i guess is for programming it with the star call rapid software which is pretty much impossible to find and then here are the external in-out ports, and I'm missing the connector on the top of it there, it's around here. And the two relays for those in-out ports. Dip switches. And then here are the four indicator LEDs. 
I'm looking more at the board here. A very well made board. This is revision B, which is interesting. And here's the processor for the entire system. And that's that's very nice too. There's uh, I do believe that I saw uh, Texas Instruments chip somewhere on here. I can't really see it good enough but uh, to identify that now. But there's also other processors here. A lot of the chips are in sockets, at least on the other boards, not so much on this one. But that's obviously good for it to be serviced and to replace the chips on it if you find that one's bad. And this is also a very well-designed board. Look at the back of these two. The soldering on this is excellent. It's it's probably the most well-made board that I've handled from this time. Keep in mind that this, this unit is from 1996, so it has, technology has developed quite a bit since then, but it's still, for how old this unit is, it's a, a very well-designed board. What I'll show is what the unit looks like booting up so you can check the sequence of the lights and see if it matches your unit because that's an indication that something's wrong so you see that the red light on the processor card comes on and then the other ones go through there check and, and eventually you'll see the heartbeat of the unit as the manual call it start and the ATEL light will blink once and then the ATEL light will start flickering like that if it has communication with the ATEL so now I guess I'll go over the punch blocks and how they're wired. This is what an array of four punch blocks looks like and each card in the bottom of the unit that has a cable coming out of it goes to one of these punch blocks. This, These three are for uh, audio distribution from the audio switching cards and they could also be used for the telephone cards if this had support for the standard telephones and, and they do make cards for it for that but uh, this one's for the ATEL here and they have these plastic covers on them but they they come off easy enough. Now, so you can see this better, I'll take this card that cover off. Now, over here are the tip ring data plus and data minus. I really don't know what order they're in. And then 24 volt plus, 24 volt, well, common, I guess. And uh, these six wires go to a Cat5 jack, which I have going through a piece of shielded Cat5, but it doesn't need to be shielded up to my kitchen countertop and also to another ATEL phone here. Now, on the audio switching cards, one half, well not really a half, but one section of it is dedicated to the audio output and also inputs. And um, they're the same from each classroom. So the red and the black wire go to a terminal on the transformer of each speaker or it gets stepped down to the eight ohms which the speakers require. And then over here is the call switch wiring and the cabling that this is supposed to use, the wire, is four strand shielded cable. And uh, usually, ideally, the only two strands in it that are shielded are the red and the black ones because they're for the audio uh, distribution. But the reason why it's shielded is because the speakers also act as microphones. So it has to amplify the signal to such an extent that the amount of hum on it just from all the interference especially when you have hundreds of feet of cable is ridiculous but if you're running it just to a speaker and you don't want to have two-way conversations back and forth through the intercom module on this then you can run not shielded cable to it really any type of cable would work but the color of the wires in it there's white and green wires and they're for the call switch and when you bridge the white and green wire in a classroom or whatever room it is then it rings this phone here and I'll show that in a second here's the green common wire and then all the greens are common together there's the shielding wire all the shields are common together too and the great thing about these punch blocks here is that they have four terminals for each wire on it now the two outside terminals are where the actual wires get connected to but in the middle of it is a bridge that connects the two sets because these two connectors here are shorted and these two connectors here are shorted. In order to get uh, a uh, connection from this side to the other side, you put these jumpers on it. And the great thing about that is if you get a false triggering call signal 
from down here because a wire is shorted, then uh, you can just move that off to the side and it stops that false incoming call signal. Now at the beginning of the video you saw when I pushed the call switch on the wall here in my basement, it rang the ATEL phone over here. The reason, well the way that that works is when you press any call switch throughout the building, it's going to connect this green wire to any of these white wires here on either of the punch blocks and that's going to pick it up as an incoming call. Now I have the ATEL phone right next to me here and the punch block isn't mounted on the wall like it was in the original building but if I touch right to this connection here and then onto one of these with this loop of wire it's gonna ring the phone now if I pick this up it just so happens to be a room upstairs that if I pick this up it'll make a loud paging noise in so I'm not going to pick it up right now but it's also important to mention that when this unit is configured in such a way that if you press that call switch button twice in rapid succession like this which I'll try and get a different room this time well it goes into an emergency mode now if a person accidentally presses that uh, call switch twice it's going to ring like crazy in the office or wherever the phone is like it is now and uh, that can cause a panic among secretaries or whoever uses this that doesn't quite know that just pressing the button twice causes an emergency uh, an emergency ring on it. So well, that's pretty much how the call switch inputs work on it. This is the ATEL phone which is up on my kitchen countertop now and I have under cabinet lighting here so it's a lot easier to see than in the basement. I have two phones connected into the system and I just switch between them. I don't have the two connected together because it's uh, a little bit difficult and I don't have a punch block tool and I don't have any patience either. So here is the way that you would go about paging an individual room. So you could either pick up the phone and it goes out the speaker here or you could press speaker phone and it goes out the speaker here and then when you press talk it goes in the speaker here, not the speaker, the microphone. Now. Since I don't get feedback because the speakers are only about probably 15 feet away here, I'll lift the phone and I'll dial the number. And then I'll be able to carry on a two-way conversation pretty much anywhere in my house right now through this intercom. And then you can also page the intercom, page the whole building by dialing 720 or just 72 pound. And that works like this, and now it's going throughout the whole building. Or you could do an emergency page throughout the whole building, which is either 70 or 700 pound. And that plays a special tone over it to uh, enunciate that there is a emergency or whatever in the building. Now, the programmable function keys on this, I'll show how you can program them here. So. You don't have to pick up the phone or anything. You press and hold the menu key, and it'll say the information about the ATEL. And then, if you press on the individual keys, you can program them. So I want the emergency key to put an emergency page out. So I'll change 70, which is just the, the prefix to the, the number. All the emergency things deal with 70, so 700 pound. And then you press that, and that's what that is. Now, for the page, this phone just has it programmed to 72 pound, but 720 pound is easier to remember just with the way that the system works. And then these have each got their own function keys. This came out of a elementary school in Virginia, and this phone was only about $80 on eBay, which is a spectacular price for it. The reason why it was so good of a price is it was being sold untested. So to exit the menu mode, and you can press the... Oh, I don't know if you can press those keys. Well, I'm just going to exit the menu mode anyway. And uh, show you a couple other things. If you want to page an individual room, or if you want to do anything, distribute an audio program to an individual room, you're going to dial the prefix for what you're going to do. So the prefix for paging is 72... And then if you want to do just an individual room, it's 723, and then the room number, 
So 104, which is my living room, and uh, let's do 210, which is the upstairs, and then pound. It's only going to page the rooms that you selected. Now, when you go to distribute an audio program, you can do seven, seven, three, zero, zero, one pound, and that puts the program everywhere. And then to cancel the audio program, seven, three, seven, zero, one pound. Now, seven, three, seven. 7.3 is the prefix for the audio, uh, 7 is to cancel the audio, and then to monitor the audio, you can do 7.3.8.0.1 pound, and that's going to monitor source number 1. Now to put source number 2, you would do the same thing, or to monitor source number 2, 7.3 prefix, 8 to monitor, 0, 2, program source 0, number 2, and then pound. And that monitors source two. To, uh, there's also ways to distribute it to selected zones. However, my unit only has one zone, so that would be kind of pointless to demonstrate. And then there's also the tone distribution. Now the prefix for tones is seven one. And then if you wanna put a tone to all, it's just seven one zero. And then the tone number, and if you're doing a number, there's 26 tones, I believe, for this. So if you want to do a tone from 1 to 9, you do 0, 1, which is the um, page pre-announced tone. And then when you press pound, it's going to distribute tone number 0, 1 everywhere. And now say that you want to distribute tone number 2 everywhere. 7, 10, uh, 0, 2, pound slightly higher pitch tone to all the speakers and uh, then if you want to um, put a tone to an individual room 7 1 prefix for tone 3 means that you want to put it to an individual room whether it's a page audio program or tone tone number let's try 0 3 and then I believe I put it to 104 that's the living room and even higher pitch or it might be the same, I'm not entirely sure. So that's the basics of the ATEL phone here, and you can program any of these keys on it. You can control the volume of the speakerphone. The handset itself has a volume control on it, and uh, I'll show the back of it in the bottom now. Stuff that Duke came made for their Star Call series is some of the ro most robust stuff that I have ever handled. Now, this is the back of the phone here, and if I zoom in on it, you might be able to see it a little bit better. And then there's also, well, I guess this is the bottom, but on the back of it here, there's only one connection. Now, I believe that there's a switch in there for resetting this, but there's just a, a standard Cat5 jack. And now I have that Cat5 jack coming out of my wall here, and that goes down to the punch block on the intercom. You plug these phones back in, or when you first give power to the intercom unit, they make a popping noise and that's just a speaker on it and it's entirely normal. So now what I'll show you is a sort of a magic trick here. In my basement, I tapped into the wire leading to my living room and I put another speaker in that circuit. And uh, I put an Amazon Alexa next to it and the output, the headphone output, the line out from the Amazon Alexa is going into that audio mixer on the top of my intercom system which goes into program source number one. So I'll cancel everything out first. 73701 pound cancels the program. Then I want to put the program 73, which is the program, 3, which means you want to put it to certain selected rooms. 01 program source number 1. 308, my basement. 210, upstairs. 104, my living room. And also the basement. The Alexa and then 106 which is my family room pound now that programs the rooms and I believe this can go up to something like 60 characters that you can type into this at one time and it recognizes it and uh, since that goes to the rooms now the output of the Alexa is going to the room so what I'll do I'll say Alexa turn off under cabinet lighting then I'll quick hang it up and you'll hear it say okay over the intercom or I could have it play music but I don't think that that's 
too good. Alexa, turn off under cabinet lighting. And the okay that you heard there was going over the speakers in my living room, my family room, the basement, the other one in the basement, and the one upstairs. And uh, that's how that works. And then the tone distribution on it, you can program all these keys, and that's what's really excellent about this phone. And an important thing to note is that you cannot use any old phone for this. This has to be an administrative telephone, which there's few of. There's there's ones on eBay which have sold for over five hundred dollars tested and since this was untested though it was it was cheap and uh, they're they're excellent phones however they can be a pain to work with sometimes because they're not compatible with anything else other than this intercom system. And another thing to mention about this phone is that this is just a plastic panel that goes over this paper insert here and uh, this tells what the function keys do so if you never program the keys on your phone then this is when it was programmed by the elementary school in Virginia and then there's the original now all phones like this have this same printout in it and these are the default functions however they went ahead and programmed this to do their individual things their, to, to suit their individual needs so to demonstrate why this is such a versatile system, these are JVC speakers from 1969, and uh, they're 8 ohms. However, I have a volume control in series with them, and uh, there's two right now. I only have the camera on one, and these are on shelves in my family room. Now, they're 8 ohm speakers, but I have a volume control in line with them and the intercom amplifier. I have the intercom amplifier configured to output around 25 volts RMS, which would pretty much destroy these speakers. So instead of having a step-down transformer in line with it, I have a volume control, which I'll show now, and that lets you shut these off entirely and uh, also control the volume of the audio program source, which is excellent through pretty much any speaker that you connect to this unit, especially uh, home quality ones like this. But. Uh, I'll show the volume control now, which is in line with these speakers and the intercom. This is the volume control for those JVC speakers in here, and uh, right now I'll put the volume up on it. So this is going to feed those speakers the entire 25 volts or whatever coming out of the intercom. Go ahead, press it. And it's rather loud, so now I'll put it down about five notches. This is about a half volume. Go ahead, press it again. And then I'll put it down to nothing. And go ahead, press it again. And there's nothing. So that's how that volume control works to control. And I programmed one of the function keys out there and just had my sister press the button on it every time I pointed to it. I'd like to thank you for watching my video on the Duquesne Star Call. Duquesne Star Call. Duquesne Star Call. Intercom system. Intercom system. Intercom system. Thank you all for watching the video on the Duquesne Star Call intercom system. This will be the beginning of a long series of uh, instructional videos and also probably having some fun with this system. But, uh,. If you like the video, please consider liking it and also consider subscribing to this channel to see more of this content coming in the future. And if you have any questions about this system or if you have one of these systems yourself and you're going through a troubleshooting process with it, please feel free to comment in the description because I have pretty much every printed manual that was printed for this in a hard copy and a binder that... Uh, would probably be very helpful to anyone going through and trying to troubleshoot a unit like this. Um, so yeah, feel free to comment. And once again, thank you for watching.